Okay, so hello Kulturati, this is our lesson 9 for our online education. So this is our second video sa online education natin. Basically, this is a continuation of our topic. So I just want you to get your notebook and your pen para maisulat mo ito. And bago tayo mag-proceed, let's have our quick um, review. So I want you to remember our previous um, topics na pinag-usapan din sa nauna nating na na um, online education video. So, sabi doon, anything can be art. So, anything na pumapasok sa isip mo, anything na nakikita mo, ay pwede natin tawagin art. Pero, there's a catch. Not all art is valuable. Meaning to say na hindi porket pareha silang sining ay pareha sa sila ng value. So, best example natin dyan ay yung paintings or yung abstract expressionism ni Jackson Pollock at ng ating um, hallway floor sa Golden Fate sa senior high, ba So, kahit na mukhang pareha sa abstract expressionism, not all value, not all art is valuable. Okay? So, ano pa sabi? Not um, the value of an artwork is not based on its appearance. Meaning to say, kahit na ito, di ba, si Spolarium versus si Mona Lisa, kahit na ganyan sila, or like, mas malaki si Spolarium kay Mona Lisa, mas mahal pa rin si Mona Lisa. Okay, so kagaya na lang nito sa effort and details, kahit na mukhang, or obviously, malayo ang details nilang dalawa, parehas yan ng presyo. So kagaya na rin nito, and ito, itong mga pinakita ko sa inyo. On our first video, nag-buff yung pinakita, yung, yung pag-swipe natin or yung pag-next natin ng video. Pero I just want to show this again to you. So, look at this painting ni John uh, Michel Basquet. Diba? So, mukha lang siyang graffiti na isang tambay malapit sa inyo. Pero it was sold for 60 million US dollars. And kagaya na lang ito ni Frank Stella's Double Scramble of 1978. Naibenta siya for 2.2 million US dollars. So, mukha lang siyang artwork no grade school kayo or like no grade 5 kayo. And this one, Joan, de Mir uh, Joan Miras Femme Devant Le Soleil, noong July 7 of 1938. So, naibenta to ng 700,000 US dollars to 800,000 US dollars. Okay? So, kahit na medyo unusual, yung itsura, okay, naibenta siya ng ganyang kamahal. So, it's not about the appearance, guys. And even this, Alexander Calder's Arigny of 1957. It was sold for 466 US, US dollars, okay? So, mukha lang siyang yera, pegtag-pitag, pwede ba? So, it's not about um, the appearance of the art para makonsider natin kung ano or kung magkano ang value niya, okay? So, it's not about the appearance para mag-judge ng value. Now, let's have the let's have the recap of what makes art valuable. So, if kabisado mo to, then very good. I want you to think about it and I'm just going to give you a short, short review on your notebook kung sinulat mo ito. Okay, so browse your notebook for 5 seconds. 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, eh, 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 char. Okay, so, if kabisado mo or if naalala mo ang um, what makes art valuable, then you are a certified culturati slash kabisote na naiintindihan kung ano ang kinakabisado. So, sige, let's have number one, supply and demand. Number two, we have artist reputation. Number three, the size. So, so ano yung the size? The bigger, the better. Number four, condition. Okay? So, through time, nag-disintegrate ang mga painting, bumababa ang kanilang halaga. Number five, prices of similar pieces. So, the more na parang pinainting or the more na pinainting ang mga artworks in the, with the same era or with the same um, subject or with the same art movement, ang tendency ay magkaroon ng pagkakaparehas ng presyo. Number six, where it has been exhibited. Number seven, awards and recognition. Okay, so, the more na maraming naging awards and recognition ng artist, the more din tumataas ang value ng kanya mga paintings. Okay, so let us proceed. Anything can be art, but not all art is valuable. So, tandaan mo yan. Ang lahat ng bagay ay pwede mong tawagin art, pero hindi lahat ay binibigang halaga. Ikaw, binigyan ka ba niya ng halaga? Char. So, sige, let's proceed. Now, let's um, have um, the academic art versus the academic art. So, pag sinabi natin, academic art must use the principle and elements of art. So, pag sinabi natin, academic art, ito yung mga artworks na ginagamitan natin ng principle. So, ito yung mga artworks na binibigyan natin ng rubrics at ginagawa natin inside the classroom. Kung bakit binabalik natin ang mga artworks nyo noong tayo ay nag-mimit pa sa classroom. And then you have non-academic art. Kapag sabi natin non-academic art, kahit ano, do whatever you, uh, uh, whatever you want. So, kung may freedom ka, gawin mo lang kung anong gusto mo. So, we call that non-academic art. Kasi kung gusto mo bang lagyan yan ng principle or ng elements, bahala ka. Basta kapag sinabi natin non-academic art, anything that you want to do, then do it. Just do it. That is recalled non-academic art. Okay, so let us proceed. Ah, okay, nag-sync in na ba? Nag-sync in na? Okay, so very good. Um, shake your hands para mag-sync-sync. Okay, medyo nakaka-boring ba yung video? 
So, please, huwag kang maboring kasi ito lang ang pagkakataon natin para makapag-usap, okay? So, let's us continue our lesson 9. So, we're just going to talk about the theory of arts and the principle of art, okay? The elements of arts and let us proceed. Number one, we have the line. So, pag sabi ating line sa Tagalog, ano yung line sa Tagalog? Well, yes, basically, that is guhit, okay? So, pag sabi ating line, the contextual meaning is an element of art defined by a point moving in space. Line may be two- or three-dimensional, descriptive, implied, or abstract. Okay, so I have actually a video here na hindi ko na ipiplay sa'yo kasi hahaba pa itong pagsasalita ko dito and ayoko naman panoorin natin ito ng sabay. So, mag-iiwan na lang ako ng link sa ilalim tong video na ito at I want you to press that video or click that video para panoorin mo to bago tayo mag-proceed sa next slide natin, okay? So, if you don't, if you want to watch the video now, then do it. Okay, so kung ayaw mo, I will proceed. Um, kapag sinabi natin what is art or what is the essence of arts in art, well, basically, maraming artwork ang uh, gumagamit ng lines, di ba? So, uh, I just want to show you another video na uh, ginamit sa painting na The Girl with the Pearl Earring, okay? So, um, yung link ulit nito ay nasa ilalim, okay? So, panoorin mo. Kung gusto mong panoorin ngayon, panoorin mo and pwede mo ipost yung video. Okay, para mas ma-gets mo or magkaroon ka agad ng initial ideas kung ano yung pag-uusapan natin patungkol dito sa lines at other elements. Ayaw mo pindutin. Okay, bahala ka. We will proceed now. So, line as a communication. Before a person acquire a new language, symbols first. Okay? And symbols are composed of lines. So, kunwari mag-a-abroad ka. Okay? So, hindi ka marunong mag-Japanese, hindi ka marunong mag-Korean or mag-Chinese. ba? Diba? So, ano yung una mong titignan? Kunwari sa kalsada ka, of course, yung mga arrows kung saan tapunta yung directions. So, we call line or we use lines to create those symbols. Okay? So, we use lines to create symbols and we use symbols to communicate. Okay? So, paano yan? O, take for example, ganito. Line works as an initial clues of communication in the world in almost all aspects. So, lalo na sa roads. Diba? Ginagamit natin yung lines or yung symbols na ginawa ng lines para maintindihan natin kung ano yung nasa paligid natin. Okay? So, let us proceed. Um, we have the types of lines. So, number one, we have horizontal and vertical lines. Pag sabi natin horizontal and vertical lines, so, horizontal yung tuwid. Okay, straight. Straight na gan. Pag sabi vertical, yung patayo naman. So, refers to the orientation of the line. Horizontal lines is normally associated with rest and calm. Okay, so, nagpapahinga or like, kalmado lang. So, take for example, ito. So, we call it horizon kasi nga, it's, it's a horizon or horizontal. Okay, so, this is the sunset. So, horizon ang tawag dyan. So, it shows rest and calm. Do you agree? Diba? Kung bakit nga, may mga lovers, diba? They often watch um, sunset kasi nga, it's calming, it's relaxing and such. Sure! So, next. So, we have this um, monkey here na, well, gorilla. Chillin', okay? Uh, rest and calm. So, the art of doing nothing without being bored. So, it's horizontal. Nakahiga lang siya eh. So, it's rest and calm. Next, we have um, eto, si Paningning, yung tuta. So, if you're familiar with that tuta, with that puppy, so, that puppy is doing rest and calm. So, that is still horizontal line, okay? Next, we have this one. Okay, so, sabi dito, horizon or hor uh, hor hor uh, horizon, uh, horizontal line may also refer as a straight line. So, pwede natin tawagin si horizontal line as straight lines, okay? So, it implies also or it also depicts death or corpse. So, kapag daw tuwid na tuwid, kagaya na lang ni Olympia, di ba? It depicts corpse or parang teggy bells na, patay na. So, kapag nakahiga nga naman or tuwid na tuwid, that is dead. So, kagaya nitong si Kuya dito na, ewan ko, nagpa-planking or teggy bells na talaga. Next, um, vertical lines. Pag sabi natin, vertical lines connotes elevation or height which is usually taken to mean exaltation or aspiration for action. So, pag sabi natin vertical lines, basically yung mga nakatayo. So, pag sabi natin vertical lines, sabi dito, together these lines communicates stability and firmness. Okay? So, stable daw or like firm. Ganon. So, take for example, ganyan. So, yung mga sundalo, look at that. They are vertically arranged. Nakatayo sila. So, it depicts stability and firmness. Okay? So, even strength. Okay? Next, this one, stability and firmness. So, that is Gat Jose Rizal. Statua niya yan. So, it's vertically or vertical. It creates vertical line. Therefore, it creates stability and firmness. Also, we have ito, yung um, England soldier na, na hindi mo mapapagalaw at hindi mo rin mapapatawa, di ba? So, they are standing vertically. Basically, yes, kasi nga nakatayo sa vertical yan. Stability and firmness. Okay? So, next, we have diagonal and crooked line. So, pag sabi natin crooked line, sungke, char. So, yung mga baluboloktot na guhit yan. So, pag sabi natin diagonal lines, it means conveys uh, movement and st instability naman. Although the progression can be seen, 
and um, we have crooked or drag lines. On the other hand, pag sabi natin crooked or drag lines, ang ibig sabihin daw nito ay reminiscent of violence, conflict, or struggle. So, example nito. Ito actually yung best example. Yung monster house. So, makikita nyo na crooked. Actually, you cannot create a vertical or straight line in that um, image. Kasi nga, crooked siya or tabingi. Okay? Diagonal siya. So, it depicts violence, conflict, struggles, or conveys movement and instability. Okay? Instability naman. Um, uh, contrast kay vertical line. Next, we have uh, violence or struggles naman. So, kagaya ni Kuyang Nadulas, diba? it conveys movement then and stability. So, makikita nyo, crooked yan. Uh, basically, crooked. Wala kang magagawang vertical line dyan eh. So, ano pa? Next, we have curved lines. So, pag sabi natin, curved lines naman, these lines that are bend or coil, they allude to softness, grace, flexibility, or even sensuality. So, take for example, itong ballerina na ito. So, she shows um, softness, grace, flexibility, or even sensuality. So, nakikita nyo, naka-curve yan. So, curving yung body niya, di ba? So, next, we have ito. Okay, so, ayan. So, makikita nyo na elegant and flexible yung statue. And then, next, we have um, this. So, this is um, this is an art, okay, sa pader, or this is a, basically a street art, okay? So, sabi dyan, todos juntos podemos para el sida. Now, by just looking at it, makikita nyo na may mga curving lines dyan. So, may mga gesture lines din na tinatawag. Um, it actually connotes, or it actually says, together we can fight AIDS. Okay? So, makikita nyo yung, yung pagkaka-curve um, ng mga taong yan, it shows actually elegance, sensuality, and even flexibility towards something, okay, sa issue ng AIDS, okay? So, next, we have um, other types of line. So, we have other types of line na hindi ko na nabigyan ng examples, pero ito yung definition kasi very easy to understand naman. We have other types of line. Number one, we have flat line. Pag sabi natin flat line, yung mga makakapal na guhit. So, a dark, heavy line quality caused by heavy pressure of the pencil on the paper. So, take for example, yung classmate mong madiin magsulat, yung kapag hinawakan mo yung likod ng notebook niya, yung may texture, yung parang pag, kunwa, pwedeng maging ano, pwedeng kahit nakapikit ka, makakapa mo yung letters. So, we call that flat line kasi nga, madiin or makapal yung um, lines. Next, we have accent line. So, pag sabi natin accent line, a line quality that changes from light to dark as it curves over the edge of the object. So, gumagamit tayo ito kapag gumagamit tayo or kapag nag-drawing tayo ng mga hair strands or like when we are trying to shade in a quick movement. Accent line ang tawag doon, okay? So, or parang, yun yung biglang gaganon lang, something like that. So, yung from from the base of the drawing, tas bigla kang gaganon. Well, that is accent line. And then, we have gesture line. Kapag sabi natin gesture line, a line drawing that is done quickly to represent movement. So, take for example, balikan natin si this one. Um, etong mga lines na to, these lines, ito, this, if you can see my mouse, that is what we call gesture lines kasi it depicts movement. So, take for example, di ba, tumaas yung paa niya, ibig sabihin. We call that gesture line kasi it depicts mm, movement or it depicts a quick movement. Okay, nagigets mo ba? So, if you have a question, feel free to message me. This is, this is Ma'am LJ. Uh, if you have um, other informations to add or like other conclusion to add, then you are free to message me or to comment below. Okay? So, um, hindi tayo matatapos ng wala tayong ginagawang activity. So, ito yung magiging um, online and this will be our graded online education um, output. Okay? So, I will give you the instruction here. So, sige, let us begin. Um, output number one and for our um, online education, create a contour drawing. So, pag sinabi natin contour drawing, a drawing that defines the edges and the surface ridges of an object. So, bago ko sabihin sa inyo kung paano nyo gagawin yan, please, 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 pakitandaan kung kailan yung deadline. So, pakisulat na rin para may reminder ka. And kung paano to gagawin, I will need a time lapse kung, uh, eh, or photo documentation. So, man, paano po yung time lapse or yung photo documentation? Basically, habang ginagawa mo yung artwork mo, you will just take a picture of your artwork para alam ko na ikaw ang gumawa niyan. Para alam namin ng mga art teachers mo na ikaw ang gumawa niyan. Kasi ang mahirap sa online education is that we don't know if kayo talaga yung gumagawa ng outputs nyo. So, what we want you to do is to create a time lapse kung kaya ng cellphone memory mo or ng memory ng cellphone mo or kung hindi naman kaya, at least photo documentation and then isisend nyo sa amin through portal natin sa student portal. Okay? So, nagigets mo? Nagigets? So, I will tell you what to do now. So, kapag sinabi natin um, contour drawing, I just want to tell you something muna. Um, 
let's have to rewire your brain. Okay, so pag-usapan natin ng utak mo. So are you left brain or right brain? Ano yung favorite mong ginagamit? Well, kapag daw creative ka, you are right brain user. Kapag naman ikaw ay into logics or like mathematical, um, mathematical solving or like mathematical analogy, okay, you are into left brain. Okay, yung mga logic or critical thinking or reasoning, you are left brain. Now, sabi nila, medyo mahirap daw ipag-connect tong dalawang to, lalo na kung ikaw ay left brain user. Pero to be honest, pwede mo siyang i-rewire. Eh. Actually, you can actually rewire your brain. So, paano po yun? Well, basically, with the use of contour drawing. So, I'll tell you what is contour drawing. Pag sabi natin contour uh, drawing, this is the... Con um, this is the uh, defines, or the drawing that defines the edges and surface regions of an object. So, paano mo gagawin yan? So, we're going to create... Um, a guess uh, a contour drawing using the continuous line drawing okay so paano po yun what the idea here is to create the drawing where you never lift your tool from the paper so ibig sabihin continuous ka magda drawing okay so paano yun yung pencil mo nakalapag sa papel mo continuously dino drawing mo yung gusto mong i-drawing okay bakit anong purpose po nito a continuous line drawing is a, an exercise to help us focus on the line direction. Kasi, imbis na titigan mo, ay, pantay ba to Pantay ba yan? Yung eyes ito, pantay ba? Yung eyes ito, pantay ba? Yung nose ito, pantay ba? Yung mouth or everything ba, pantay? Magkufocus ka kung saan pupunta yung lines mo. And then, number two, it makes you focus more on looking at what you are drawing. So, kapag nakatingin ka lang kasi doon sa line na ginagawa mo, okay, mas madali for you na maintindihan yung ginagawa mong drawing or para mas ma-rewire mo yung brain mo on how to connect the lines or yung continuous lines sa ginagawa mo, okay? So, take for example, ito. Okay, so, look at this. This is actually um, drawings na nagawa natin with um, continuous line works or line drawing. Actually, this is an example of contour drawing kasi ang drawing lang natin dito ay yung edges lang, yung gilid lang. So, makikita nyo ay nagsimula tayo mula dito sa kanto. Tapos, we proceed with creating these things hanggang sa maharating tayo dito sa part na to. Okay, so nag-end ako dito sa part na to. Okay, so this is what we call um, um, contour drawing. And this is how you're going to do it. So if you want to have um, more explanation, let me just open my sketch. Um, sketch, what do you call this? My sketch application. So, stand by. Let me just show it to you. Para mas magets mo. So, it's not working. Stand by. Okay, so let me just open my paint. Okay, so, this is how you're going to do it. Mm, okay, stand by. Let me just show you an example of how you're going to do the contour drawing. Okay, so let me just skip this and press it again and ayun so ito let me just show you okay so take for example this is your paper ma'am pwede po bang digital art well it's up to you as long as nakikita ko na meron kang um documentary nung ginagawa mo kasi ang mahirap sa digital art parang ginagrab mo lang sa iba or pwedeng dayain siya through grabbing other people's artwork diba so let me just show you so, let me use, let me adjust the thickness of this. So, this is what we call accent line kasi yung kapal pinag-uusapan natin. So, if I'm going to create a contour drawing, it's, ay, sobrang kapal. So, if I'm going to do a uh, contour drawing, let me just proceed with um, the lines. Let me create something like this without lifting my finger on my um, mouse pad. So, ginto lang siya. So, as you can see, I'm trying to create a human face with um, continuous line. So, kayo, ganito rin yung gagawin nyo, pero sa papel na lang kung wala kayong um, kung wala kayong digital arts, okay? Actually, mas prefer nga namin yung nandun sa papel kasi nga, mas easy sa amin na makita yung effort nyo. So, ganito, example nyan, ito yung contour drawing. So, continuous din lang. So, let me just make more para mas makita mo. So, um, bawasan natin yung accent line. So, get, let's see. So, let me just put, make a flower. So, let's create a flower. Okay. So, and then we're going to create the 
stem and then the leaves without actually lifting my hand and I'm going to create the base of it okay so continuously lang and then let's say this flower is on the table like that and meron ditong uh, let's say meron ditong bottle okay let me just put the label of the bottle so this is what we call um contour drawing okay so in now if you have a question feel free to message me feel free to message your teachers sarts and then we will proceed again your deadline will be on march 24 for your contour drawing okay so any questions any um information that you share um we are willing to tolerate it okay so let us proceed to our ending now i hope gawin mo to and i hope pag-aralan mo maigi and lang thank you for watching